Hello, Prudential Sales Executives, for our video message of the week. All right, this week's message is entitled, Don't Protect Your Leads, Cultivate Them. Now, here's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on lead follow-up. Remember, lead generation is speaking to people that you never talked to before. Lead follow-up, on the other hand, is speaking to someone that in some way, shape, or form you've communicated to in the past. Now, we have all had people we know or know through a friend or have some sort of relationship that have moved forward on real estate decisions without us. And we want to do our very best to make that vanish or to at least bring it to a minimum, the best uh, that we can. All right, so how do we do this? Well, a couple things. First of all, we have to understand that lead follow-up is so very important. You know, lead generation is extremely important. But one of the biggest reasons, okay, sales executives lose business is less on lead generation many times, it's lead follow-up. These are people that they, they know us, they trust us, we just don't communicate with them often enough or effectively enough and we lose business because of it. All right, so I wanna share with you just some thought processes around this concept and give you some ideas of how you can be communicating on a much more often basis. All right, so keep this in mind. You've got sales executives, or I apologize, you've got consumers out there now that as the market starts to adjust and change, well, you know what? It's changing their circumstances. Maybe you've got sellers now with equity that didn't have equity before. Maybe they know it. And now they're starting to make decisions and having thought processes that they didn't have six months ago. Maybe when you talk to them, it wasn't on their mind, but it is today. Let's say you have somebody who's just simply ready now because of the uplift in prices is ready to move up. Eh, I don't have a lot of equity, but I can sell this property now and I'm ready to move up and buy another house. Maybe they want a new home. Okay, and they've really been excited. I, I really want a new home. It's something I've always wanted. So this time, instead of buying a resale, I'm gonna get out to the marketplace and look at new homes. Guess what? You don't want them doing that without you. You know those rules. So the way to do that is make sure you stay in contact with those individuals. Hey, maybe they want to downsize. So they're finally ready to say, okay, I can sell this property and I can downsize to something smaller because that's really what I want to do. Maybe they're done with a yard. They don't want to deal with a yard anymore and they want a condo that has less maintenance. Whatever the reason is, I want you to start thinking that all these questions continue to jump around in our clients' minds, all right? And they can not be there 60 days ago and now be there today. And so you want to keep that in mind. Never forget this. Job changes happen all the time and affect people's decisions as it pertains to real estate. Life changes just in general. Health issues can change, okay, business decisions. You know, a change of plans just in general can change what they're going to do as it pertains to real estate. Okay, so the message today needs to be really clear, all right? Lead follow-up is so key, all right? You have to have a specific system on a daily basis that you're gonna say, I'm gonna contact, I don't care if it's just five, but five people a day I'm gonna be talking to and asking these questions on an ongoing basis and I'm never gonna stop. And you know what, as time goes on, I will get through these individuals, okay, in a very aggressive manner, and I'll tell you this much, when a decision comes up in their mind, if you talk to them often enough, you have the best chance possible that they'll call you when it's on their mind. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.